shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind. This is the great and the first commandment. But the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend upon these two commandments. The gospel. You shall love God, and you shall love your neighbor. All is predicated upon these two commands. The readings that we had at the proclamation at the beginning sketch out exactly what love is all about. And you know, in the history of humankind, the poets, the musicians, the artists, the writers have all tried to capture what love is. Love is very elusive. It's not easy to pinpoint and be specific about. Because I also like to feel that love is like the many sides of a diamond. It is so rich that it has multiple facets. It's not one single thing. But we do know what love is not. We do know that love is kind, that love is gentle, that love is patient. Kindness and gentleness and patience in a world that is so filled with pressure that it's hard to be kind and to be gentle and to be patient. And yet over and over we present to brides and to grooms this magnificent idea of gentleness, patience, and kindness. The idea is not achieved right here on the spot. It is worked at over a long lifetime. And those of you who have been married for a while will pray for and encourage this wonderful young couple. For the journey is filled with her. The journey is filled with joy. But the journey is also filled with sadness. The journey is filled with health. The journey is filled with sickness. There are so many, many sides. But the one thing that unites and holds this all together is the essential covenant of love between God and humankind. When God created, He saw that all that He created was good. And He turned to the man and the woman and He said, Be fruitful and love the Lord. Fill the earth and subdue it. He entrusted it to these two wonderful people and to all of you married people the responsibility and the privilege of continuing the process of creation. And that is what we celebrate today. Wonderful man and a wonderful woman who have found each other and grown in love for each other and will continue to grow in love. But to address you, I would mean to say to you that it will be your patience, it will be your encouragement, it will be your exhortation that will give them the day-to-day -day guidance that is so essential to growing in love. May I ask that you continue to love them, that you continue to pray for them, that you continue to direct them, and that you continue to guide them. If that happens, indeed, they will and God will watch after them and shine His face upon them. What I would be doing now is actually 
right of marriage. Could I ask the bride and the groom, please, come forward? I mean, you can leave here while we're on the chair. That's very good. Good. I forbid them to look at me. She is much nicer looking than I am. <laughs> May I have? My dear friend, you have come together in this church so that the Lord might seal and strengthen your love in the presence of this church's minister and of this community. God blesses your love. He has consecrated you. And now he blesses and strengthens you by the special You may assume the duty of marriage in mutual and lasting fidelity. And so in the presence of this community, I ask you, have you come together here freely, without reservation, to give yourselves to each other in marriage? Will you love and honor each other as men and wife for the rest of your life? Will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up to your goodness and God's love? It is your intention to enter the matter, and thus I command you to join your right hands in order to display your consent before God and before His holy church. There's two ways to do this. Oh, yeah. he's a coward. Thank you.